Hello and welcome to The Print. I have with me Mr. Ram Madhav, senior BJP leader whose influence across the party stretches from uh, domestic politics to foreign policy. Mr. Ram Madhav, welcome to The Print. Thank you. My first question to you is on the uh, deputy chairman of the Rajya Sabha, the victory that the BJP pulled off. How did you manage it? You didn't have the numbers, but you still pulled it off. Uh, you see, we did have enough numbers and uh, I would say our floor managers have done extremely good job and I would also say that the floor managers of the opposition were so poor that they could not get all their own votes itself. But you didn't so have the numbers, you don't have a majority in the Rajya Sabha, so how did you get the Nobody numbers? has a majority in Rajya Sabha, it was ultimately bringing several parties together mm -hmm. and trying to get uh, the required numbers. Okay. That's why I said our f um, managers did management. a fairly good job, floor managers did a fairly good job, our leaders did a fairly good job and we secured more votes than what NDA actually has. So how house. did how did you do that? No, as I said, talking to all the concerned parties, their leaders, mm -hmm. convincing them to support the candidate. Today, Mr. Uh, uh, Harivam Prasad Singh is one of the best suitable candidates for the post of deputy chairmanship in the house. He's a senior uh, leader, senior journalist who has uh, worked in all parts of the country. He knows the whole country well. So he's a really suitable person for that job. So you gave... And besides us, even uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar has uh, made lot of efforts to secure the support of various parties, especially the support of our uh, Navin Patnaik was crucial and we secured his support. So you allowed support. Mr. Nitish Kumar to lead the charge? No, not really. I mean from BJP side, Shri Amit Shah, mm -hmm. he has spoken to many parties, many what leaders. What did he do? What did Mr. Amit Shah do? No, as I said, that is what is called floor management. Sure. We so reach out to who different did he, parties. Who did he no, that I don't have to disclose here. Okay. Only thing is all the NDA partners have extended their full support. Uh, even Arun Jaitley Saab, who was not well, mm -hmm. I mean, who not well means he is doing well, but he underwent that major surgery. Right. He also came to, came to the parliament and we found some Congress people missing, saying that, uh, you know, they were unwell and they were in hospital. So, What's we took Congress it up with all seriousness and it seems that opposition party said there was seriousness was lacking. You are saying Congress people were missing? That's what I heard, I read in papers. I see. Some of their own members didn't turn up. There are also reports that people from the Trinamool Congress were missing, is that correct? That, that, that's what I read in the papers. At the end of the day, it was the BJP that led the charge not only with its allies, but all also our, against all the… All our NDA partners have taken this election with utmost seriousness. Our party leadership has worked hard. All the leaders in the NDA constituent par partners, they have worked hard and brought the, so many extra votes, that's why the NDA got 125 votes. Were you surprised? Uh, not really surprised. I knew we were going to get good support. Mm -hmm. We were expecting a couple of more parties to support us, but they decided to abstain. Like which ones? Like we expected PDP to support us, uh, but they finally decided to, we have requested them to support us, but they decided to abstain. But the fact that, the, that you pulled out of the coalition government in Jammu and Kashmir against the PDP, but you still managed to get their abstention, that's quite significant. Um, certainly we are happy that they decided to abstain. And help We would have been happier had they supported us, but they decided uh, finally to stay away from the election. So what does this mean, this, this, uh, the deputy chairman now is part of your uh, alliance? What does this mean for politics? No, don't, uh, one need not see too much, try to read too much into it. It's a good effort to secure uh, support in favor of a very able and very eligible person to head the uh, Rajya Sabha as deputy chairman. And once he is the chairman, he is chairman for all the 225 members of Rajya Sabha, uh, 245 members of Rajya Sabha. But going forward, we have three state elections coming up and then in less than a year, national elections. Is this, do you think that this is some sort of a, a sign of things to come? You see, in all these states, it's a straight fight between BJP and Congress. Mm -hmm. And we are quite hopeful of doing well in all the four states. Okay. When I say four, including Mijoram. That's right. And then, of course, the general elections coming up. Yes. So, uh, let me ask you about Jammu and Kashmir. You were in uh, Srinagar a few days ago 
what was that visit about no we regularly go there to meet our leaders our legislators uh, some of our legislators were in shrinagar i had a meeting with them and generally to review the situation and in jammu and kashmir two months from now the government is contemplating holding the local body selections okay. so we have started uh, preparing for the local body selections of course in jammu region but also in kashmir valley as well as in ladakh region but the assembly will remain in a state of suspended animation or are you going to pitch to uh, to form a government uh, right now we are uh, in favor of continuing the governor's rule for some more time governor's rule has time till december this year right. uh, ideally should continue for few more months then we will see to when we come to the end of the tenure of the governor's rule we will see how politics or developments take shape uh, by early december or so but then in jammu kashmir as you know there is a provision for extending it by another 6 months as president's rule right so i think suspended animation of the assembly is what we are in favor of because then there will be at least mlas there is political activity in the state okay if no alternative government is possible in the next Uh, say one year roughly one year less than uh, one year time then obviously we'll go for the assembly elections also okay so until from now to possibly for one year from now it's unlikely that there is going to be a government in jammu and kashmir no that i can't uh, say anything about that what if uh, nc congress and pdp come together they have the numbers yeah. so i am not saying anything about what will happen but as far as bjp is concerned we are in favor of continuing with the governor rule for some time what about the governor is there any thought about changing the governor himself as uh, far as i know the tenure of the governor will get over in uh, a couple of weeks time right. uh, rest is uh, in the hands of honorable prime minister whatever he decides but there is some thinking that he should be changed no he his tenure technically is over okay. but government can think about the future it can take steps i assume there will be a new governor soon okay let me ask uh, come to assam there has been a huge agitation in assam over the uh, nrc the national register of Cit- citizens what is your view on that no whatever agitation is there is outside of assam mm-hmm. in the parliament outside in delhi in assam everything is peaceful there was a final draft released a few days ago but it's a draft there is a period of about 2 months now for those who were left out in this draft to appeal 40 lakh people rather yes 40 lakh people but That's a then lot we people. checked no no in fact i must remind you in 1995 mm-hmm. uh, pm sai the minister of state for home affairs right 97 indrajit gupta as minister of home in gujral's uh, government had said that 1.5 crore illegal infiltrators have come from bangladesh into india this was a number given in the on the floor of the house no that's that's so, fine 40 lakhs is not a big number but having said it i'm not saying that these 40 lakhs are illegal infiltrators because some of them might not have taken this access seriously might not have submitted proper documents they have time for two more months to submit their documents and prove their uh, citizenship but your own party president mr amit shah has said on the floor of the house that they are gospetiye infiltrators what he said was gospetiyon ko koi bhi desh tolerate nahi karta india to karega hi nahi but koi bhi desh tolerate nahi karta but he also said he said it clearly in his interview so first of all he was not allowed to speak on the uh, in the raj sabha okay. on the floor of the house so he has not actually said anything <laughs> but he said in the press conference that yes 40 lakhs have been today found not able to prove their citizenship okay. two months period is there let them prove but no no he did say on the i think he, this statement on the floor so of the house this is what he said about this petty you can interpret so, it any way you okay, want okay so these 40 lakh people you are saying will be given a chance to prove their citizenship yeah, of course they, because a lot of people a, feel that they have been left out unfairly I mean, we have so much hamdardi for infiltrators in this country. I know that no country has that kind of hamdardi. But I am saying they are still having two months time to submit proper documents. Those documents will be verified. After the verification is completed, it may take another three four months. 
then when final NRC comes, yes, then those who are left out of that NRC will technically be deemed as foreigners. But then, I must tell you, uh -huh. even after that, they still have options. They can go to the foreigners tribunal and say that this uh, decision about me is wrong. You know, then the foreigners tribunal, ke baad, they can go to high court. See, we are not denying any legitimate citizen his right of citizenship in this country. No single legitimate citizen will be left out. So then what was the NRC about? NRC is about identifying illegal infiltrators into our country, illegal migrants into our country, identifying them and taking steps appropriate in dealing with them. So you are assuring all the citizens who are that they will not be deported to Bangladesh or a, lo a lot of people who may not even have proper documents. No, once you fail in establishing your citizenship, you see it's not about one document. Yeah. 15 different documents are allowed as a proof of your citizenship. Okay. If one fails to produce all of them, then one has to think uh, whether he is a legitimate citizen of this country or not. So your own so, alliance partner, the AGP, has also said that this is not such a good idea. What? Uh, they have been critical of that. Not, not at all. In fact, AGP is insisting that this very fact that you only could identify 40 lakhs itself is wrong. They are, they are saying that. They are saying there are more infiltrators who have actually now become citizens through this process. That is their com complaint. They are saying this to you even now? Some of the people, some of the leaders in Assam are quite unhappy that this very figure itself is an understatement. Having said it, I am saying the process adopted by the Registrar General of India uh, with the help of the state government was very transparent, mm -hmm. very scientific. That's why I am repeatedly saying not a single genuine citizen of the country will be left out. There is some, um, uh, there is some concern inside Bangladesh that a lot of these people will be deported back to Bangladesh. Have you said anything to the Bangladeshi authorities? Our leadership is in touch with the uh, Bangladeshi side. Uh, while uh, before we reach that stage of deportation, we have to cross many bridges. As I said, there are several steps to take. Right. We will cross the bridge when we reach there. We are in touch with Bangladesh government. Bangladesh government understands. See, they are themselves facing the huge problem of refugees. Right. On their own soil today, about 600,000 uh, Rohingyas are living in refugee camps. We are extending uh, support to Bangladeshi government in managing those refugees. Mm -hmm. In Taking care way? of those refugees, we have sent two shiploads of uh, support material and all that to Bangladesh. Okay, so and we are ready to extend more support for uh, humanitarian and humanitarian grounds. So you have assured Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina that you will not take any step that would be uh, contradictory to Bangladeshi interests on this we particular... We take steps in our country's interest, but we will make sure that our uh, neighbour also understands the situation and we whatever needs to be shared with them, we will do that. Okay, and these 40,000 Rohingya that you are saying will also be expelled from the country. They How are, does that happen? They are being identified now. They are in five, six cities in the country, in the south, in Bombay, in Delhi, in Jammu, in Calcutta and these places. The process of identifying them has uh, been uh, initiated by the Home Ministry. Once the identification is over, then their deportation process will begin. And they will be sent back to Bangladesh uh, or to Myanmar. Myanmar? To Myanmar. Yes, okay. they are, Rohingyas are from Myanmar. From Myanmar. So they will be sent straight from India to Myanmar. Uh, that's why I said right now the process of identification will begin. Then future steps will be uh, contemplated. Okay. Now my question to you is also about a lot of Bangladeshi Hindus have come from Bangladesh to India and have settled down in India. There is a citizenship bill in parliament, not only about Hindus from Bangladesh, from, but from other parts of the neighborhood. What is being contemplated about them? Uh, the minorities from erstwhile Pakistan, that includes today's Bangladesh yes. and Afghanistan. Uh, if they come seeking refuge in India out of persecution, reasons like persecution look in those countries and all, Indian government traditionally has always uh, accepted such claims of refugees coming into India. Right. For 2000 year history, if you see India's history. Mm -hmm. So this bill which is being contemplated is in that spirit. It's for the whole country. Mm -hmm. 
they can come into they come to Rajasthan some of them come into Rajasthan some of them come into Punjab right. some of course come into Bengal and Assam so this bill is being contemplated we will see when it is taken up in the Lok Sabha then the discussion will move forward but you are in favor of this bill being passed that's why we are proposing the but bill but is it will it be restricted only to the hindu population as i said the minorities in these countries okay. pakistan bangladesh and afghanistan right. that include hindus buddhists especially chakmas in uh, bangladesh christians sikhs all these communities as persecuted uh, minorities if they come and seek uh, refuge in india india has a responsibility so effectively it seems that say from bangladesh particularly that only if the hindus are given citizenship or they are allowed to stay in india then you are expelling only the muslims you are not going to expel the hindus you must remember that uh, this hindu muslim discourse is a very misplaced discourse in india rest of the country cut off year for citizenship is 1951 but for assam it is 1971 right. between 51 and 71 whoever came whether he was a hindu he was a muslim he was a buddhist he was a christian everybody was granted citizenship okay. where is the discrimination post 71 mm -hmm. those who come without valid documents and stay over stay here they are identified as illegal immigrants this happens not just in india saudi arabia has deported bangladeshis is, so this saudi is arabia. so this is true so, for whether you are a hindu or a muslim or anybody for for minorities for the whole country we are we are drafting a law for the whole country even after 1971 uh, that applies to 1971 prior but right up to 2015 okay the uh, the proposal was for to, until 2015 as cut off year so that's what so even between after 71 to 2015 all minorities whether hindus from, from, or uh, yes. christians or sikhs into who, india they will be given citizenship that is the bill pro proposed right but the muslims after 71 will be uh, expelled and deported back all to all other illegal migrants will be expelled okay so there is that difference you are making illegal migrants i am talking about okay so in effect it is a hindus who will, who can what stay what in effect right? you decide i am saying 1971 afterwards right. those who minorities who come to india as persecuted seek refuge here the bill provides for an option to grant citizenship to them all right and um, and th but this is not applicable to sri lanka or the maldives or nepal or this particular bill is to erstwhile pakistan and afghanistan okay Mr. Ramadev thank you so much for speaking to the print. This is Jyoti Malhotra for the print.